My guest today is Guy Royce. Guy, how you doing? Good, how you doing? I'm doing really well. Welcome to my shop. I've been hoping to get you on this for a long time because you have the best beard in the industry. No, thanks, I, uh, I grew it myself. <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> what do you do, Guy? Uh, I'm a developer advocate at Redis. Redis, very cool. Yeah. So, so is there a lot of cash in that business? Uh, yeah, there's a ton of cash in that business, <laughs> but there's even more database. Database. I want to talk to you about data. Uh, database. Uh, you, you said a phrase earlier that I, I had never heard before. It was the um, probabilistic, help me out here. Probabilistic data structures. Data structures. Yes, easy for someone to say. Uh, it's a uh, probabilistic data structure. I could totally say it, but I hadn't heard it before. Yeah. Tell me, what is it? Uh, well, aside from being hard to type, yeah. <laughs> it's like, are, are there, is it an A or an I? And, it's a know. weakly typed thing. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it, yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right, we're going to stop with the puns. Let's go. Yeah, yeah we got to stop with the puns or uh, no one's going to listen to this, right? Um, a probabilistic data structure stands in uh, opposition to uh, a deterministic data structure. Okay, and what is a deterministic data structure? A deterministic data structure is, uh, is or are, uh, deterministic data structures are the all the data structures we know and love that we use all the time already. They're hash tables and sets and uh, you know, graphs and arrays and du doubly linked lists and all those things we uh, coded up in college and then haven't coded since because every language has them baked in for us already. Okay, and deterministic uh, suggests that when I query something, I get the answer, and there is an answer. At any given time, there is one correct answer right, yeah, in it, the deterministic data structure. Yeah, it does exactly what you think it would do. It's, it's well, it's deterministic, right? Yeah. I, I mean, hate defining it, a thing with a thing, but yeah. it's it, it does what you expect it to do. I, I, I shove a thing in a linked list, I can get that thing back out of the linked list. Yeah, and there's no really wrong answer. It is either yeah. it is the right list or the like, right thing or it isn't. Yeah, either it's in there or it isn't. But yeah. the probabilistic is different. Yeah. So um, a probabilistic data structure is a, a data structure that will, well, well sometimes it'll lie to you. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> um, that, how is that useful? That's, that's yeah, uh, well, you know, lies can be useful, I suppose. But, in the short term. My, <laughs> in my the short experience term, yeah. is they're, they're useful in the short um, term, but not in the long term. So when you're picking a deterministic data structure, you're often, often looking at the, complex, the time complexity or the space complexity of them. So, you know, this is really fast. So, like, uh, hash tables are a good choice because you get an O of 1 operation, a big O of 1. Uh, okay, so O of 1. Constant time. Okay. So uh, no matter uh, what item I'm looking for, it takes exactly the amount of same, same amount of time to find it each time. Okay. Uh, as opposed to like if you're trying to find, a, find an item in a linked list, you have to walk that entire linked list, and so uh, the it's an O of n. It takes the amount of time is determined by how long the list is. Okay. And so um, and so these data structures have time complexities associated with them, where uh, some are slower uh, and some are faster. And mm -hmm. then there's sort of a trade-off that you make where um, they also have a space complexity, where like a linked list takes up exactly the amount of space it needs. Okay. Whereas a hash table's kind of got some empty space in it. Okay, the space on disk you're talking about. Yeah, or or in, or in memory. Okay. Um, and so you're, you're making these trade-offs between, you know, it's like, well, I want this sort of feature, and I I, I want uh, it to be fast more than I want it to be space efficient, or vice versa. Like, sure. So yeah. you make and these that, trade-offs. That's, that's changed. Uh, the, I remember the old days, space was expensive, like disk space was yeah. expensive. We had to be really cautious about how much we did use. Nowadays, compute is expensive, so yeah. uh, our priorities change. Yeah, uh, and so you make those trade-offs, but there's there's actually a third trade-off you can make, which is you can make an accuracy trade-off. Hmm. That seems like an odd thing to trade off, but, so, it, but it, go on. It does, and so you say, um, say you've got um, a billion things that you want to keep track of. Hmm. Well, uh, if your things are even a few kilobytes, that adds up to a lot of memory very quickly. You know, you're, you're looking at a, a couple gigs already you right. know, of memory. Right. Um, and that's a lot of space if, you, if you've got that much stuff, right? If you've got tons and tons of stuff, sometimes that accuracy is a good trade-off. If I could take that, ac that amount of space required and the time required to walk through, through all that data and take it down, say, three orders of magnitude, okay. uh, would that be worth um, the data structure giving me the wrong answer 2% of the time? Hmm. And so that's the kind of trade-off you're making with a problem. So I guess I'm, I'm thinking to myself, that depends upon the cost of a wrong answer, right? Yes. Like, a, does a wrong answer cause kittens to die? It, yeah. Um, in which case, I would say, no, let's not. Let's save the kittens. Yeah, absolutely. Let's the save the kittens. Of that. 
But if a long, wrong answer causes me to uh, maybe have to retry, yeah, then that's probably okay. I right. can retry it a thousand times if it's an order of ma- a couple of orders of magnitude. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that's exactly the kinds of trade-offs you're making. Okay. Um, the, uh, the, the the sort of the canonical example I I like to use is the idea of a uh, and this works well with a particular data structure called a bloom filter. But it's it's a, the a uh, bloom filter. A bloom. Okay. It's uh, be bloom like as in like a, a flower. flower. Okay. Yeah. Um, I believe that was the uh, the person who created its last name. So. Oh. The producer is one of the main characters. Is Bloom. Oh yeah. It was probably the same yeah. guy. <laughs> obviously, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I digress. Um, but a uh, bloom filter um, works well for this sort of canonical example that I always like to trot out for probabilistic data structures, which is uh, determining if a username has been taken or not. Okay. So uh, I, if say I'm Twitter and I've got a billion users. Right. Um, and I want to see, is this username been taken yet or not? So, you don't, re- so you don't reuse it. You can't yeah. don't have two usernames the same. Got it. And so you, you can't just go out there and say, you know, select star from users where username equals you know, Bob. Because that would be really slow. Because, yes, because that would not perform well okay. at all uh, when you've got a billion users. Got it. And so um, what you can do is you can create a bloom filter and you know, add all of the users that you have so far into that filter and then ask the filter, you know, and maintain that over time. Okay. And ask the bloom filter how many, uh, or ask the bloom filter, is this username taken or not? Mm-hmm. And that bloom filter will either say, no, it's not. Okay. Or it will say, yes, it probably is. Oh, so, so it, say no or it can definitively say that it, uh, if it has not been taken, but it cannot definitively say if it has been taken. Is that Correct. the idea? Okay, all right. Yeah, and so that guarantees you won't get any name collisions. Got it. But it doesn't mean certain usernames will never be used. Ah, uh, okay, so the cost of that is minimal. Right. And so the name Guy yeah. Royce might never get used, but you know, no kittens die. That's right. Not, that's not yeah, Kittens exactly. die as a username may not be right. available anymore, but, <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> but we probably don't want anyone... We probably don't want anyone having that username anyhow. So oh, yeah, you're jinxing the things, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> something like that. Um, but it's I, I and, and my t- I have a talk on this topic. Yeah. Um, and and the example I like to use to familiarize people with the concept is is, is something they've all used, which is a JPEG. Okay. And JPEGs are a little bit lossy, right? The, the compression when they compress it down, you lose some of the data, and some of the pixels aren't exactly the right color or in exactly the right pattern, mm-hmm. but you don't see it. Yeah. And so it's a little Especially, bit lossy. Uh, yeah, because computer screens are, are imperfect, your yeah. eyes are imperfect, and so it's worth that trade-off. Right. And so you're, it's the same kind of trade-off you're saying. It's, it's a little bit imperfect, a little bit lossy, but accurate enough. Oh, uh, okay. And, uh, and there's lots of other things where this sort of accuracy is something you can, you can trade off. Oh. Um, and a, another example is uh, unique views of a, YouTube, of, well, of, of a video from a video ser- sharing service, right? If, mm-hmm. if you're YouTube, for example. Okay. Um, you want to count how many unique, and I don't know that they do this. I don't right. know how YouTube does anything, but um, they could use a probabilistic data structure to keep track of unique viewers of a video. Okay. They don't want to count me twice. If I watch the video three times, that doesn't count. Yeah, you might like try to boost yourself by right. uh, writing a little script that um, just plays that video over and over again. But you can count. You can add the username of the person who watched that video to um, another type, another to a particular probabilistic data structure. Hyperlog oh. log would work well for this. Okay. Um, what, 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 hyperlog what? Hyper, log, log. And that's a product that implements probabilistic data structures? It's a particular probabilistic data structure, like a bloom filter. Okay, oh, I see. All right. So uh, hyperlog log. It's actually hyperlog log. There's one in open source Redis that you can use. Okay. Um, so, so Redis is a product that implements yeah, probabilistic yeah. data structure. If yes. you turn it on, if you apply these filters. Right. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So a hyperlog log count, counts unique things, and it can count... You know, trillions upon trillions of unique things, and mm. it takes up 12 kilobytes of space. Uh, okay, because it doesn't uh, insist on being a thousand percent accurate, or 100 percent right. accurate. Right? And so, you know, it, at low numbers, it's going to be pretty accurate. And when you get into higher numbers, like this video has been viewed one million three hundred and seventeen thousand nine hundred and twelve times. Mm-hmm. If it's plus or minus a couple counts, it doesn't really matter. Right. You're trying to get a unique views, but that the accuracy at that scale just isn't that valuable. 
Yeah, and in fact, I th- I'm, I'm pretty sure that YouTube does the thing where when it gets to a really high number, it says 1.7K, or so it abbreviates yeah. it anyway. It doesn't give you that kind of right. precision. Although I suspect that's a user experience thing more than anything. They yeah, probably have a more accurate but number. But just like the, the JPEGs, are, uh, you don't see them because of the user experience, because the UI right. and the computer yeah. screen are imperfect. The, well, the display is, it only has so much space available for the display. I, I don't know how YouTube's doing that, but I if I were YouTube... Mm-hmm. <laughs> which I clearly am not. Not yet. <laughs> uh, I would use a hyperlog log for that because it's a really simple way of solving that problem. It's okay. 12 kilobytes. It's very tiny. Okay. But there's a lot of people that are doing just exactly what you described. They're, right. they're, they're displaying the the, 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 web, the old web counter at the bottom of the web page yeah. that uh, GeoCities used to yeah. have. <laughs> I, remember, I remember when they started getting to the point where they would just... You know, they would have the little web counter, and it looked like an odometer. Right, exactly. Like an old manual yeah. odometer. And in the movies, they would actually have it flipping in real time yeah. you know, and then, without then, refreshing the page. And then eventually <laughs> someone just made an animated uh, GIF. It's pronounced GIF, by the way, right? <laughs> <laughs> I pronounce it FIG. <laughs> FIG, yeah. G is for GIF. Uh, but uh, they had a little animated GIF that was just it spinning so fast it's blurry <laughs> to represent the fact that you've had so many hits on your website. <laughs> Better hurry up and get yeah. this. <laughs> billions and billions served, right? Um, very cool. So, no, um, so you say Redis has has this uh, available, this feature available. Yeah. It's not turned on by default, right? It's, Correct. Uh, t- walk me through a little bit how Redis implements that because I think this is probably yeah. a good example that other people are implementing the same way. So, um, it's, it's not turned on by default except hyperlog log. Okay. So if you're using vanilla open source uh, Redis, mm-hmm. uh, hyperlog log is a data type that you can uh, use. Uh, there's a, I think the command's pf add. Okay. And if you, you start adding things to this hyperlog log. And so vanilla, generic, open source Redis available anywhere will do this. Um, there's a, a, a oh, it's, a, it's available by default, but it's not necessarily turned on by default. Uh, it's actually do... turned on by default. Okay. So All any right. bog standard Redis will have a Got hyperlog it. log in it. Okay. Um, Redis has the ability to add modules to extend its capabilities, so you can add new types uh, and new uh, new pr- new commands. Okay. And so, and there's the host of these. Like we have one for a graph database, and we have one for uh, doing some AI stuff, and we've got one for time series. There's a bunch of them. Um, and one of them is called Redis Bloom, and it adds hmm. uh, probabilistic data structures. I see. So if you add this module to your Redis instance, um, then it opens up. Um, uh, balloon filters, which we talked about at the beginning. Uh, it opens up uh, count min sketch, uh, top K, heavy keepers. These, and are, these are filters you're listing? Yeah, yeah. and uh, cuckoo filters as well. There's, cuckoo. Yeah, That's cuckoo my favorite filters. new thing. Yeah, uh, Cuckoo filters and balloon filters do pretty much... I'm going to say this wrong. I'm not sure, actually, off the top of my head. I'm, I haven't looked at a cuckoo filter Well, you're filter probably right. That's good enough here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Uh, it, uh, but um, count min sketch is about uh, counting things. It's in the name. Uh-huh. Um, it it kind of solves the same problem hyperlog log does. Um, similar things. Uh, top K, I've talked more about top K. It's a ranking thing where it'll tell you, like you can keep adding things to, to top K. Okay. And it's like, you know, you're going to add foobar, baz, and quacks, and you just keep adding them. And it will count them under the covers, but the count's not very accurate. But the rank, it will rank them, and you can say, well, what's my top five most commonly submitted strings? Uh, and so it will rank things for you fairly reliably, but the counting is inaccurate. Okay. So. And if that's okay, then if that's good enough, yeah. then. You, you may only care about what, you know, it, you may only care about being first, right? If you ain't first, you're last. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was the philosopher Ricky Bobby. Who yeah, said yeah, that, 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 that uh, great philosopher. Um, Ricardo Roberto. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so Redis, uh, uh, Redis Bloom adds these uh, probabilistic data structures to Redis. They become new types you can use and uh, commands to add things to them and query them and stuff like that. I see. Uh, if I'm a novice at this sort of thing, like I am, yeah. uh, where do I go to learn more? Um, internet. <laughs> if you be more specific, please. <laughs> yeah. um, well, I, I, I could use this opportunity to plug the talk that I've been giving here and there. So. Good, yeah. Uh, where, where are you giving it next? Um, I'm not sure. I, I know I, I have it coming up again at another conference, but I can't remember where. Are, are you have a, a site where this information can be found? Yeah. Um, if, you, if you go to GuyRoyce.com, you can uh, usually find my upcoming speaking gigs. Yeah, we'll put that in the show notes. And, and the uh, name of the talk is? Uh, Understanding Probabilistic Data Structures uh-huh. with 112,092 UFO Sightings. 
UFO. That's the yeah. example you use. Yeah, yeah, I use UFO data as an example. <laughs> so, I the Bloomfield example takes uh, UFO sightings and saying, well, have I seen this UFO sighting before? Uh, like bloom filters are good for data deduplication. Like you can shove all your data into a bloom filter and then say, "Have I seen this data before?" Right. And it'll say no or probably. It's another it. use case for uh, bloom filters. So, um, and honestly, this talk's been recorded on YouTube several times. So uh, if you just got to YouTube and search for it, you'll find okay, it. Okay, or send me some links. Out. Maybe I can put those in the show notes. Yeah, absolutely. I think I did it at All Things Open a, a, a couple of years back. Okay. I'm not, I lose track. Uh, all of the talks have been virtual, and they all look like my office. So. Oh yeah, that's. I'm glad we're. I'm so happy we're here in Kansas City and it actually really seeing nice. actual human beings. Yes. And I got to see you. It's, it's, and, it's uh, just like I've 3D printed all the people that were on my Zoom <laughs> sessions. Nice. Yeah. And they're all here. Hey, before you go, would you mind uh, telling us a little bit about your weight loss journey? Sure, absolutely. You uh, look very different than I, when I saw you last, almost two years ago. Yeah. So I've been doing, um, I've, I've been doing uh, keto, mm -hmm. um, which is the uh, I call it the uh, throne of lies diet. Throne of lies. Hey, so if you, you sit seen, on a throne of lies. Yeah, if you've seen Elf, yeah. right? You know, you, this isn't Santa. He <laughs> smells like meat and cheese. He's sitting on a throne of lies. Uh, There's a lot of Will and, Ferrell references yeah, today, folks. And, and, <laughs> yeah. and uh, I mean, keto is eating a lot of meat and cheese. Ah, um, okay. So <laughs> the idea behind keto is, is you are consuming most of your calories are coming from fat. Okay. And less than 50 grams of carbs a day. So it's a very low carb diet. Okay. And uh, I've been doing that for about a year, uh -huh. and I've lost about 85 pounds. Oh, very impressive. And uh, and the shocking thing is is that uh, I've had several health problems clear up as well. My blood pressure dropped. I was able to stop taking my blood pressure medicine, mm. and my eczema went away and healed up. So um, even when I get down to whatever my ideal weight is, which is really not necessarily a goal, I just want to be more capable. Right. Um, I, I, I'm old enough I don't care how I look anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, not worried about looking thin and you fit. You look fabulous. I mean, you have the best beard in IT. <laughs> it um, I don't know. There, there are some other pretty good ones out it's there. It's pretty good, but not, not, not very many epic yeah. ones. But, um, but yeah, uh, I've been doing keto, and it's really working. Um, right. Kansas City has totally messed up my diet for because the past of, two you days. Can't, you can't come to Kansas City, uh, Kansas City and, so, and not have burnt ends. Yeah, exactly. And the barbecue sauces are just loaded with sugar. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and well, I guess burnt ends are uh, keto. They, they are the as long as they're not the, sauced. It, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I'll get back on it. It'll be fine. So. All right. Well, Guy, thank you so much. I learned a lot today. Thank you very much. I was told not to start this with the word so. So I'm going to start it with instead instead. <laughs> I'm here today at Kansas City Developer Conference in, unsurprisingly, Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, Kansas City is Missouri. It's not in Kansas. It's not in Arkansas. And uh, hanging out here uh, with uh, all my friends talking about all kinds of great technology. It's a good time. Hope to see you on the road sometime. <laughs>